I'm going to discuss in few minutes um, uh, the course and branches of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. So, just I, I, I would like to refresh your memory first that trigeminal nerve, trigeminal nerve, which is cranial nerve number five, has three divisions. This three divisions, the first one we call it ophthalmic, which is V1. Second one is maxillary, which is V3, uh, v V2. And the third one is mandibular division, which is V3. Okay. What I need from you to remember that ophthalmic and the maxillary, both of them are completely sensory. Mandibular division is mixed. It has sensory branches and also motor branches. Keep in mind, the motor branches are primarily two muscles of mastication. the four principal muscles of mastication which are lateral trigoid, medial trigoid, temporalis and masseter. Okay? So those are the three divisions. If you go to trigeminal nerve inside the brain stem, here is the brain stem, bones, medulla and Above here you have midbrain. Keep in mind that inside the brain stem we have sensory nuclei and small motor nucleus. A small motor nucleus located in pons. Then you have three major sensory nuclei which extend through the whole length of brain stem. Like this is the medulla. this pons and this midbrain the three structures we call them what brain stem brain stem okay where cranial nerves are come from you have 12 cranial nerves connected to the brain stem so you have motor nucleus for trigeminal you have three sensory nuclei one for pain temperature, we call it spinal trigeminal nucleus, when <coughs> for touch, we call it main sensory nucleus, then one which is called mesencephalic nucleus, this is for proprioception, deep sensation. So you have three sensory nuclei, spinal trigeminal nucleus, main sensory nucleus and mesencephalic nucleus. These three nuclei are the sensory nuclei. And you have one motor nucleus. This is the only motor nucleus which is going to supply is or going through V3 and from there is going to the muscles of mastication, the four muscles of mastication. And in addition to another two muscles, we're going to talk about them later on. But keep in mind that this is the trigeminal nerve inside the brain stem. You have four nuclei, three sensory and one motor nucleus. And then you have the trigeminal nucleus, also a trigeminal ganglion, which is located in the middle cranial fossa. And this trigeminal ganglion, the central processes of this trigeminal ganglion is going to this sensory nuclei. And the peripheral process are V1, V2, V3. Okay? So this is just a quick review to trigeminal nerve before we start the mandibular. Okay? 
So again, you have three divisions, two purely sensory, the maxillary and ophthalmic, and the mandibular is the mixed one, which has sensory and motor supplies or sensor and motor distribution. The motor is primarily to muscles of mastication. And then the arrangement and the localization inside the brain stem, you will see that we have four main nuclei, a small motor nucleus, and the three sensory nuclei, which are extending through the whole length of brain stem. And trigeminal ganglion, which is located in the middle cranial fossa, you have the peripheral process of this ganglion representing V1, V2, V3, and the central process are carrying sensation to those nuclei. Okay. Now let us move to mandibular division. The mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. Mandibular division, so quick, we're gonna cover it in a few minutes. Here is V3 or mandibular branch of trigeminal. It has two roots, as I mentioned early. It has two roots. One small sensory root and one bigger or larger one small motor root and one larger sensory root. Okay. So this is a sensory root. And this is a motor root. Okay. Both of them are exiting and going out of cranial cavity through the foramen ovale. Foramen ovale. And then they join each other deep to the lateral trigoid muscle and they form the trunk of the nerve. So now we have trunk deep to the lateral trigoid muscle. This is the trunk. Okay. Then the trunk is going to split into two divisions. Anterior division, which is primarily motor, and posterior division, which is primarily sensory. So you have anterior division and posterior division. And as you see, most of the sensory fibers are travel, traveling through the posterior division. Most of the motor fibers of the nerve traveling through the anterior division. So what are branches of each division? What are branches of each division? Let us see. The anterior division is mainly motor. It's going to supply muscles of mastication. What are those muscles? Again, it's going to give nerve to masseter. Nerve to masseter is going to supply and send branches to temporalis muscles. We call them deep temporal nerves. Then also sending a branch to lateral trigoid muscle. Okay, the branch go to medial trigoid muscle is coming from the trunk. So here is the trunk. The trunk is going to send this branch to the medial trigoid muscle from the trunk. So this is nerve to medial trigoid medial trigoid and this one is also supplying in addition to medial trigoid is going to send branches small branches to another two muscles one is called the tensor palatine muscle okay and tensor tympani muscle this is for the palate and this is in tympanic cavity so basically again the trunk of the mandibular nerve is going to send muscular branches to medial pterygoid and also two branches to tensor palatine 
and tympani, and tympani muscles. Okay. The anterior division is going to give three other muscles: nerve to masseter, temporalis lateral trigoid. What is the sensory component to here? The only sensory component is this long buccal nerve. Long buccal. This is the only sensory branch. So keep in mind only sensory branch for of the anterior division. Okay. So how about the posterior division? Posterior division give three important branches. This one which is called long buccal nerve sorry which is called the lingual nerve is going to supply the anterior to third of the tongue anterior to third of the tongue this is lingual nerve so lingual nerve supplying anterior to third of the tongue anterior to third and this is the tongue okay tongue so this lingual nerve lingual nerve the second branch is called inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve which is going to the mandibular canal traveling into the mandibular canal through the mandibular canal to supply lower teeth so this is the mandibular canal through the mandible and supply the mandibular teeth or lower teeth and the terminal branch of it is called mental is called mental so this is the inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar nerve so inside the mandibular canal is going to give dental branches to the lower teeth so this is mandibular canal okay before getting into the mandibular canal inferior alveolar gives this tiny branch which is called nerve to milo hyoid supply two muscles mylohyoid muscle and anterior pili of digastric anterior pili of digastric inferior alveolar going through mandibular canal send the dental branches to lower teeth and end up as mental and you know where mental is going supplying the skin of lower lip and the chin and before getting into the mandibular canal send this tiny branch which is called the nerve to mylohyoid supplying mylohyoid and anterior pili of the gastric okay so here is a lingual here is an inferior alveolar nerve there is another nerve another branch which is called auriculotemporal branch here is the auriculotemporal branch which is going through the parotid gland and from the name supplying auricle and the temporal region like, but before that it has long story so this is auriculotemporal nerve auriculotemporal branch what is the story of the auriculotemporal branch? Auriculotemporal branch is traveling through parotid gland. Okay, parotid and supply auricle and temporal region, skin of the temporal region. It has another root, another root. This root is coming from glossopharyngeal nerve. It's called lesser superficial petrosal nerve. Lesser 
superficial petrosal nerve which is going to supply parotid gland this one is called okay post ganglionic fibers of lesser superficial petrosal nerve which is coming from nine so keep in mind that this nerve coming from a ganglion here this ganglion is called otic ganglion otic ganglion this is a post ganglionic fiber joining the orochrotumbral nerve where is the preganglionic fibers coming from preganglionic fibers coming from glossopharyngeal like glossopharyngeal number nine if you remember okay is going to give something called a branch is called lesser superficial petrosal and this lesser superficial petrosal nerve is going through the foramen ovale also is traveling out through the foramen ovale and from there is going to this ganglion and from there is the post ganglionic fiber joining auriculotumbral nerve so again here is the glossopharyngeal nerve inside cranial cavity will send the tympanic branch and I'm not going to talk about its course but just remember that one of the branch called the lesser superficial petrosal nerve this lesser superficial petrosal nerve exit cranial cavity through foramen ovale and then is going to stop here at the otic ganglion here is the otic ganglion and from there post ganglionic fibers is going to join auriculotumbral nerve where this fibers is going to parotid gland so this is a parasympathetic fiber parasympathetic fibers okay so quick review this is a posterior division of the mandibular nerve is going to give three branches auriculotemporal lingual inferior alveolar all of them are mainly sensory except this tiny branch which is called the nerve to myelohyoid anterior division is mainly muscular or motor except long buccal, long buccal nerve which supply a skin and the mucosa or mucous membrane around the vaccinator long buccal nerve supply skin and the mucous membrane of vaccinator okay so keep in mind that long buccal supply skin and the mucous membrane around the vaccinator okay coming to posterior division i will take you back to the lingual nerve lingual nerve is going to be joined similar to auriculotumbral you see auriculotumbral joined by parasympathetic nerve which is coming from nine cranial nerve here the same see this nerve is called the corda tympani corda tympani nerve coming from facial nerve coming from facial nerve this nerve again is called what corda tympani coming from facial what is the function of corda tympani corda tympani is going to be carried by lingual to the anterior to third of the tongue responsible for taste sensation taste sensation however lingual responsible for what lingual responsible for general sensation which is pain temperature touch those are general sensation pain temperature touch however as I mentioned corda tympani responsible for test is there is any other thing corda tympani responsible for yes corda tympani is going to supply also two glands what are those glands submandibular and sublingual sub mandibular and the sub lingual salivary glands now the major salivary glands if you go here you will see that the major salivary glands submandibular sublingual parotid are supplied by facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve however those branches from facial and the glossopharyngeal are carried by branches of mandibular division 
how, as you see, glossopharyngeal nerve will send branch carried by auriculotemporal nerve, which is a branch from mandibular, to supply parotid gland. Corda tympani, originally coming from facial and carried by lingual. So, if you go back here to the first page, we didn't mention anything about parasympathetic nuclei related to trigeminal, only sensory and motor. So keep in mind that only four cranial nerves carrying parasympathetic fibers, which are number three, number seven, number nine, number 10, trigeminal is not. However, trigeminal act only as a carrier, but not the source of parasympathetic carrier, carrying fibers which originally coming either from glossopharyngeal or facial, okay? And uh, keep in mind that all glands in the head, all glands in the head supplied all glands and head supplied by cranial nerve facial cranial nerve 7 which is facial except parotid supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve by glossopharyngeal nerve which is number 9 okay so if I ask you submandibular sublingual by facial palatine gland by facial nasal gland by facial lacrimal gland by facial however the only gland which is not supplied by facial is parotid gland Okay. Before I leave this part, I like to highlight the injury of lingual nerve. The most common site for injury of lingual nerve is close to last molar. Last molar. So the last molar, if you extract last molar tooth, be careful that lingual nerve is very close to last molar. That's why if you hit it here, or something happened to it, what could be the effect? You lose the function of corda tympani and the function of lingual. What is the function of lingual? General sensation of tongue and two to third of the tongue. What is the function of corda tympani? Taste sensation and salivary secretion from submandibular and sublingual. So effect of injury here is very devastating. However, if there is injury above the level of corda tympani like here, deep to lateral to good muscle, the effect of injury here is going to be limited only to loss of general sensation of lingual because, uh, because uh, corda tympani stay intact, okay? Another point which is very important to remember, how many roots do we have for auriculotumbral nerve? We have two roots, you see? One root which is sensory, coming from mandibular, other root, which is parasympathetic, coming from otic ganglion. Otic ganglion. Keep in mind, there is important artery. You can see, if you dissect the infratemporal fossa, this artery ascend between the two roots. This is the middle meningeal artery. Middle meningeal artery. Middle meningeal artery so this artery is very important to artery ascend between the two roots everything here covered by in this area covered by lateral trigoid muscle by lateral trigoid muscle thank you